It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. As you guys can see by the title of this video, it seems as though that my country seemed to value faith over safety. So without further hesitation, let us begin. Today I'm identifying houses of worship, churches, synagogue, and mosques as essential places that provide essential services. Since Donald Trump considers churches, synagogues, mosques, and other kind of houses of worship to be essential, my main question for this president is if there are essential businesses, why are we not tasking the churches or the synagogues or any houses of worship? The main reason why I'm asking this is because we already know for a fact that a lot of these places get away with actually, you know, becoming millionaires. Like a lot of people are millionaires from churches. A lot of people use their money to sell like snake oil. We know for a fact that a lot of people are actually, you know, buying airplanes because they get so rich from mega churches. So if churches and houses of worship are in fact, of course, you know, essential businesses, why are we not taxing these kind of places at all? Now, according to American law, basically churches and nonprofit organization are considered to be tax exempt. And of course, the Johnson Amendment also states that those who are like tax exempt should not pay for like politicians at all when it comes to a separation of church and state. So my main question for you, Donald Trump, is basically this. If in fact churches and synagogues and mosques are in fact essential businesses, why are you not taxing them? Why are you not changing the whole entire law for them to be taxed? And if that's the case, that they are in fact essential businesses, how are they any different than the people from like mega corporations that actually fund politicians? Because the last time I checked, like you basically attack the Johnson Amendment, you weaken the Johnson Amendment, which basically states that, of course, people cannot get money from like, you know, nonprofit organizations. And so basically, how are they no different and no less corrupt than these politicians that actually get money from these mega corporations to run their campaign? Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. He just now mentioned, of course, about like, liquor stores and also like abortion clinics however i don't think they're like the exact same thing when it comes down to this whole entire issue now for starters for liquor stores of course people can survive without liquor that's obvious what people need to have nowadays of course is like food and water in order to survive however i do believe the main reason why so many people in power actually have liquor stores open is because people actually suffer greatly from, of course, side effects of alcoholism. And so because people actually suffer from side effects of alcohol, that's why, of course, these businesses for liquor actually are open. Now, as far as abortion clinics, of course, I think he's referring to like Planned Parenthood. However, Planned Parenthood did not actually have stuff like just abortion for your services. Of course, the services are STD testing and treatment, birth control, well women exam, cancer screening, prevention, abortion, hormone therapy, fertility services, and general health care. So even if a person was super pro-life, there are different services within Planned Parenthood that actually could actually help people out in terms of health care. Not to mention, of course, when people were young and were Christians, they were taught that basically God is, of course, omnipresent. Now, what's the definition of omnipresent? Of course, omnipresent, of course, means that something is actually everywhere at once. And so, if God is truly omnipresent, really, that means that if you pray in a house or like a church or wherever, He can actually listen to your prayers. So, why do you need to go to the church or a synagogue or a mosque to pray to your personal God if you could be like anywhere at once? Not to mention, there are online, like, you know, services, for example, sermons and radio stations and, of course, TV stations. So, you don't necessarily need to go to church to pray to your God because ultimately, if a large group of people come together in a church, the more likely the virus would actually spread. 
And because the virus was spread much more quickly, of course, you'll probably spread it to a bunch of people as well who do not go to church. So it not just affects the churchgoers that might get the virus, it actually affects everybody else. So I'm correcting this injustice and in calling houses of worship essential. I call upon governors to allow our churches and places of worship to open right now. Since you, Donald Trump, is super convinced that churches are essential businesses, I'm going to use the Bible to put the points that, of course, you don't need to go to church to actually do your worship to your God. This, of course, comes directly from Matthew 656. Now, before somebody say, well, geez, Tyler, I use the King James Bible, blah, 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 I don't care. It does not matter what kind of Bible you use. Just please listen to this point that I'm going to make right now. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and so on in the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go to your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who will see what is done in secret will reward you. So there you have it, folks. A biblical base to not go to church because essentially it says that God will reward you if you actually pray at home and not go to the synagogue or the churches and blah 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 so you don't necessarily need to go to church to actually talk to your God like <sighs> I can't believe I have to use the Bible to justify people not to go to the freaking churches and the synagogues and so on so whatever if there's any question, they're going to have to call me, but they're not going to be successful in that call. These are places that hold our society together and keep our people united. The people are demanding to go to church and synagogue, go to their mosque. That is true. About 70% of Americans identify themselves as Christians, while 20% of the population identify as non-religious. That being said, I honestly do not believe that Christians are that stupid. I know for a fact that there's also probably millions of Christians out there in my own personal country that actually think that going to church and their houses of worship is actually some sort of bad thing because they also know about the science. Not every single denomination about Christianity, of course, is actually scientifically illiterate. Of course, there are like denominations like Catholicism that actually embrace, of course, the Big Bang as well as the theory of evolution. And so I know for a fact that there's also millions and millions of Christians who probably agree with me, even though I'm not a Christian at all, that think that going to a freaking house of worship during this time, during this pandemic, where it could spread the virus, is actually a bad idea. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm too much of an optimist that I see the bright side of things. Maybe only time will tell if I'm actually right or not whether people would actually go to church and actually affect people by mass. We'll see in the future, I guess. Many millions of Americans embrace worship as an essential part of life. The ministers, pastors, rabbis, imams, and other faith leaders will make sure that their congregations are safe. I'm kind of curious just how could safety protocols actually be done by a church? Because I myself used to be an altar boy. And so what I used to do, of course, I passed like the Bible to the priests. And of course, we had close contact with the Bible and the priest together, right? And of course, sometimes you have to feed like the bread and the wine to people. Like there are some people, at least in the denomination I was in, which was like Catholicism, there were some people, of course, that drank the wine after each other. And so what happened is that sometimes the live would get in the wine, and of course, people would drink after each other like that. And of course, there are some people who want to have the bread that's placed in their mouth, and so you have close contact with the mouth and the bread. Or, of course, you could just use your hand and get the bread that way and actually eat it. And of course, there's like long lines of, of course, various seats where people are holding hands together and like, of course, praying and blah, 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 blah. And so it's kind of hard to do a church service without some sort of hand contact or whatever kind of contact because how are you going to do that? Like, how are you going to freaking have people do that in your churches? As for the Muslims, of course, like, they have, like, a freaking rug 
where they pull out the rug and of course they sit down and just keep praying to Allah. And so there's like a whole entire room of these Muslims praying to Allah on a rug. You can pray to Allah at home with the rug and stuff. So again, there's like really, really hard to have safety protocols for these kind of stuff because they're like a large gathering of people. Whereas for a store, it's actually easier to maintain because you can put up signs and stuff. So I'm not sure if it's actually going to be really, really actually easy to maintain to do that kind of stuff. I know them well. They love their congregations. They love their people. They don't want anything bad to happen to them or to anybody else. If these church leaders do in fact love their people, then they will not open the churches to begin with. Because basically, their blood, of course, is on their hands. The blood is on their hands for opening up these places because they are probably already know already that they're not going to survive. Like, there are some priests and, of course, people that try to blow away the coronavirus in the video. And so, honestly, the blood is on their hands for trying to open up these places if they really want to. If they really care about the people and actually the well-being of humanity, they know for a fact that they should actually say, take, of course, safety precautions that are actually not for the spread of virus. The governors need to do the right thing and allow these very important essential places of faith to open right now for this weekend. If they don't do it, I will override the governors. So there you have it, folks. It seems as though that Donald Trump, our president of the United States of America, actually values faith over science, faith over safety, so yeah, my country is pretty much doomed right now. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler